This tutorial will show you how to blend soft pastels or chalk pastels to create a vibrant work of art based on the light and shadows created by candles. You will need a variety of materials and I'll put the link to that in my description box. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. I am using chalk pastels on Strathmore pastel paper. So I like to do a toned paper because sometimes a blank white piece of paper can be stressful. And we're gonna start by making a gradient. A gradient is very similar to a value scale, except you're using color. So the focus here is to use warm colors, starting with red and ending with yellow, to create um, dark to light, so red, orange to yellow, using blending. So I'm gonna start by pressing down with my chalk pastel, and you can see right away it's super crumbly. So I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna dust it off on the scrap paper I have off to the side so I don't make a total mess while I'm working. Pastels are messy. Oil pastels are a little cleaner to use, but they're oilier, so you just kind of pick your poison when it comes to pastels. What mess do you prefer? You can see I'm starting with red, and then I blend it over it with orange. In blending, don't be scared to really smush and blend the colors together. You can see I'm going back with red because the orange became more dominant. So when blending colors, you're always kind of going back and forth and back and forth, trying to get each color to either have an equal blend or whichever color you want to be dominant to really show up. So you can see I've done my red to my orange and now I'm overlapping with my yellow. It crumbled quite a bit, so I'm gonna dust that off before I do too much blending. And the yellow really pops and looks great against this burnt orange paper that I've chosen. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna dust it off again. When using pastels, it's important to stay ahead of the mess. Um, your hands are gonna get really dirty. Um, if you blend with a finger or your Q-tip, that will get dirty too. So just make sure you're always kind of looking at what color is on your hand, looking at the mess on your paper and trying to kind of contain the mess as you work. You can see I'm using a Q-tip to help blend a little bit, which I really like, but also keep in mind that the Q-tip or your finger, whatever you're using for blending, does pull the pigment or the color from your paper. So I always find it best, as you see I'm doing here, to blend with the actual tool itself. That way you're blending pure, vibrant colors and you're not dulling it down or graying it out with um, a blending tool. So you'll see me use a combination of those techniques. I like to always end a value scale with white, especially because this is candlelight in this particular artwork. I know I'm gonna be using lots of warm colors and that white is gonna really pop the candlelight that I'm gonna be adding towards the end. So you can see my yellow and orange kind of have a solid line. So I'm gonna go back and try and blend that, going back and forth between the orange, between the yellow, asking myself which color needs to have more of a voice or more of a presence on my paper. I'm doing the same thing in the white. You can see the white is very vibrant. It really makes a beautiful glowy um, yellow, which will be important when I start my candle. Now I'm gonna speed things up to double time and I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps and do a value scale using blues. Think of these blending exercises, creating these gradients as warming up before a game. So if you're an athlete, you don't just jump on the field, you practice, you warm up, you do drills. Same thing if you're a musician, you practice your scales before you jump on stage for a performance. So think of this, if you've never used the material, as understanding how the colors work together, how they blend, and this is a great way to help you understand not only value areas of light and dark, but how to blend successful colors. This will also help you pick your favorite color combinations when it comes to your final work of art. You can see I've done multiple here, and I always have my students complete at least five gradients before starting on a final piece. As you can see, I am practicing observational artwork, so I am looking directly at the subject matter that I'm creating art with. I purchased these LED candles for my classroom, and I have students set up little still lifes like this, focusing on the reflected light and shadows. Notice how important the background is. Look at the areas of dark and light where I am gonna be blending that red, orange, and yellow gradient that I practiced before. To sketch, all you need to do is fold a piece of paper, set up your candles, take some videos and some photographs of the flickering candle light. It's okay to use images from the internet, but if you're drawing things from direct observation, it's gonna be more lifelike because you have the three-dimensional object in front of you. I have classes of 39, and so I don't have enough LED candles for students. So we folded colored construction paper, whatever color they were interested in making their gradients, and they set up little still life moments in a lights out dark room. So if you cut the lights out when photographing, videoing, or painting or drawing from direct observation, you're gonna have more dynamic um, lights, you're gonna have more dynamic shadows, and that's just the way to go. Once you've done that, just like you see me doing here, I'm sketching the most important details. Obviously, the candle and the flame is very important. However, 
don't neglect the shadows and the reflected light in the background. It's important to sketch those areas too. You can see I'm using my reference, which I'm actually drawing this from direct observation. I just wanted you to see what I'm looking at to include those dark and light areas in the background and the shadows underneath. That's gonna be really helpful to find your areas of light and dark using color. So I'm gonna use my red, orange, and yellow gradient, and I'm gonna actually do the candles last and focus more on the negative space or the background and surrounding areas of this work of art. I'm gonna start with red, just like I did with my gradient. And if you see the photograph to the left, my candles that I'm looking at have the darkest areas behind the candle and the reflected light hits the paper more at the top. I like using one piece of colored paper because you create almost a monochromatic background and that's just easier to understand, especially if you're a beginner using blending to create value. So I'm gonna map in that red and then I'm gonna gradually fade up to orange. I think I might add a little dark blue or purple down at the bottom and really push the dynamics of contrast or areas of darkness next to light areas. After red, then I'm gonna move on to orange and I'm gonna use the pastel to fill in more of that area. It's okay to change the way the light is. You're looking at a photograph, I'm looking at flickering candles and if you're doing this at home with actual candle light, the flickering is gonna be way more intense. Um, the LED light, the flame doesn't move, whereas a flame would move around if it's actually lit. Of course, we can't light candles or burn things at school, so we're kind of reduced to using um, the LED light and kind of using our imagination or source images to create that. So you can see that I haven't really even blocked in the color all the way. I'm gonna blend that with a Q-tip and see if I can get those colors to interact a little bit better. It's working to my advantage that my background is orange because when I'm using the Q-tip for blending, and you'll see me use my finger too, um, it pulling the color, it still, even if it pulls away and you can see some of the paper, the paper matches the color scheme. Even if it doesn't, let's say I was using like a blue background, that could be really interesting too because it's gonna create more contrast and more dynamic color. Speaking of blue, I'm gonna darken this bottom here, um, which I did not do that in my gradient, but I certainly could have added black or blue or red, which is the complement of, uh, red, I'm sorry, green, which is the complement of red to make that dark area. I'm gonna keep things simple and do blue because I know when it mixes, it's gonna make a really nice dark violet. And I am using my finger just to give it that nice smudgy, um, faded effect. Um, and I am blending that a little bit down into where the candles are as well. So I'm really happy with this gradient so far. It's a very clear light to dark. And I know this yellow is really gonna pop and brighten things up once I have a little bit of orange just to interact with. Notice it's not pure yellow up there. It's definitely more of an orange, but I wanna really play around with the shapes that the cast light creates. Um, when I'm looking at the video, and not just this photograph here, um, I can move my paper around to create different shapes. So if it's a little different than your reference photo, that's totally fine. That's the beauty of doing this from observation, and hopefully you'll be able to look at a candle in real life too, because it can change so much. It's so dynamic because the light is moving and reflecting and almost dancing on the page. My goal with this artwork is not hyper-realism. I don't want it to look like a photograph. I am trying to catch what I'm looking at. I am trying to get an accurate depiction of this still life that I've created, but I'm not really tethered to like photorealism. It's totally fine for this to be more expressive. A candle can have so much symbolism. Playing around with light and darkness can have a lot of messages and meaning in your artwork. And there's plenty of artists to look at who have used candles and flames um, as symbols and messages in their artwork. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the shadows underneath the candles. And I'm using that same really dark blue. Um, and this is a set of pretty inexpensive pastels. They're from the website Blick Art Materials. And again, all of my materials that I'm using are linked in the description box, but you're welcome to use whatever pastels you can get your hands on. The beauty of pastels is they're really not that expensive and they make really vibrant, beautiful results. I am trying to get a nice dark edge behind the candle, underneath the candle to create that cast shadow and the shadow underneath. I'm gonna blend that with the Q-tip into the red. I don't want it to be blue, I want it to appear a darker red. And unless my background is black and I'm trying to do a grayscale, um, I'm gonna avoid using black altogether just because there's nothing wrong with that color. It's super bold and intense. But when blending other colors, black is so dominant, it can kind of gray out and muddy up your color scheme. So my recommendation is to um, use the color complement or to use like a blue um, so that you're not going to be overwhelming your color scheme.
What I'm doing now is taking my dirty Q-tip from that shadow that I created and I'm putting the darker areas in the candles. I like using the Q-tip because it already has that same color so it's giving my artwork harmony because the same shadow dark color I'm using in all areas and the Q-tip is a little bit easier to control. Um, I know the candles I'm going to use a lot of white and a lot of yellow but I do want that shadow to match the overall tone of the artwork. Now that I have the darker values in the candle, I'm gonna use white to create nice areas of gray and the lighter areas of the candle. My candles are actually not pure white once you have them lit up and photographed, but I am gonna use the pure white that I'm gonna fade out with the Q-tip. You'll kind of see how I match the shadow there. The most fun and best part about this is the wax. Um, and feel free to have a little artistic freedom. So all three of my candles are exactly the same. <laughs> and they're not real candles. So the wax is manufactured and it just drips exactly the same way in each candle. So I'm not gonna be too focused on like making this look exactly like what's in front of me. Play around with the height. Maybe some are more burned down than others. Maybe some are taller. Maybe there's a candle stick holder. I mean, I could really go to town with creativity with this. So you can see the Q-tip smudging into the white is really fading it out, making beautiful areas of gray. And because my background is already orange, it already has a glow to it, which I'm just obsessed with. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of shade it in. I am looking at my reference image. You can see how yellow it is. So I'm gonna go back with yellow for sure. But I'm thinking of this as just like a base layer to get a rounded effect, to play around with my areas of light and dark, and of course, the dripping wax. These candles are looking pretty gray. I do love the color, um, but I wanna brighten it up. It is a artwork based on flames and candlelight. So let's get some yellow in there. And again, my candles are not lit, but you see this yellow matches beautifully with my image and with the candles that are right in front of me as I'm working. So I'm just looking to see where are the lightest, brightest areas. And keep in mind, the candle flame is in a dipped area. It goes in and you would see some of that light from the inside of the cam candle too. So I'm putting a little bit on the edges and sides of the candle because you would see that through the candle. Blending it with the Q-tip is gonna make it harmonious with the candle, but make it look like it's lit up and it has, um, you know, light coming from it. Flames are really fun to work with. And that's where you can have a lot of artistic freedom with this because again, if you're using LED candles, they flicker, but they certainly don't move and the flame shape is all the same. So I highly recommend looking at candle light, looking at a flame. Um, it gets really white hot and blue towards the center and then it kind of fades out to the oranges and reds as it goes out. I'm also using a dark brown because if it had a wick, there would be a dark area where the flame is touching the base of the candle. And again, this is not a real candle, so it doesn't have the wick. But if you look at reference images or look at other candles, you can see that that's totally there. One of the most fun things is gonna be adding that blue and I'm just trying to get the dark areas around where the concave or where the candle kind of like dips in where the wick is. I want that to look extra dark so it's contrasted with the bright flame that I'm gonna to add towards the center. Let's zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that blue. I'm gonna add some red to extend the flame and your flames could be going different directions, be different shapes and sizes and the blue is gonna really make it look lifelike. And again, reference images are very helpful. So looking at something instead of just making it up is always a better way um, to create observational art because you're actually looking at the object you're trying to recreate. Let's add some white to see if I can brighten up that white a little bit. And I know this is the type of thing I need to step away from. Um, I like to create areas, kind of blend them, and then come back to them because sometimes I add too much of one color or I over blend. And coming back to it or moving on to another section is a really great way to kind of shift your focus and come back to it with fresh eyes. So moving on to the background, blending out some of that lighter area that the cast light creates. I also created some lighter areas down in the bottom of the artwork because I felt like I neglected that area a little bit. And so the rest of this video I'm going to do in double speed and I'm just going to be adding and layering and playing around with things you've already seen me do. So working with pastels is all about layers, it's about blending, I'll play around with the shape of the candles a little bit, um, add a little bit of light and then fade it with yellow and I'm going to do that with all areas of the artwork. My advice is to hang this up and step away and from a distance look at it and find areas that you um, feel like need a little bit of work, whether you need more contrast, 
areas of light and dark next to each other, whether it needs some more blending, are there any areas that look boring, or need more developing, and I'm certainly gonna play around with the flame. I will be honest, I didn't love the way my flames turned out at the end of this video. I am a public school teacher, and if I was just here to make art for myself, I would spend way more time on it, but this is um, for learning, and so I might not be 100% happy with how it turned out, but I did meet my goals as far as gradients, capturing light, and I am gonna really play up that melting wax. I'm gonna add a lot of white to it. I'm gonna make that a area of the artwork that really draws your eye in. Knowing when an artwork is finished is very difficult to, um, to figure out. I tend to be heavy handed and I tend to maybe add too much. Keeping things simple is a struggle for me. However, I do really wanna push those shadows in the background. I'm still not quite happy with the flames. So you will see me double the speed I actually did this. Um, this whole artwork probably took me an hour total. So that was an hour of complete focus. Um, I did come back to it. I think I worked on it two days, um, maybe an hour total. So taking some time away, and a lot of times um, if you're new to making art or you're a student, um, stopping yourself because you don't like something and not finishing is a hang up that I've had to overcome myself as an artist. Push yourself to finish, even if you don't love it or even if it's not the best thing you've ever made. Think of it as a learning opportunity, experimenting with a new subject matter, experimenting with a, um, a material like pastels. It does take practice, so if, if this is your first attempt, you might not love the results right away, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't focus, try and finish, and try and find the good. Also, try and be a good problem solver. If there is something you don't like, don't just say, I don't like it, I'm finished, I'm gonna stop. Ask yourself why, what areas could show improvement, what are some things that you can do, um, and always pushing your values. Sometimes students are scared to go really dark and really light. It really helps capture um, dynamic light Contrast is your friend when it comes to pastel. So you can see I'm going back for like the fifth time to get that shadow even darker. And this is more of an expressive artwork. It's not photorealistic. So you can really have fun with the shapes, the patterns, and how you blend your colors. Really, the only way to learn how to make art is to make art and then learn from your mistakes and from your successes. So I'm gonna do a few last minute um, pops of white just to give my candles a little more dynamic contrast. I am gonna blend those out because I don't want them to look awkward and stuck on there. Um, again, I could work on this for hours and hours, but I think as far as um, the blending of gradients and capturing lights and darks with a base color or a gradient, I think I have met that goal. So I'm gonna call this one finished. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me and learning about how to blend with pastels. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. Also, find me on Instagram to see what my students are up to in my classroom at thatartteacher underscore machado. And check out my website, thatartteacher.com, for free full-length lesson plans, student examples, and everything that's going on in my crazy public school classroom.